call the meeting to order now at 634. Start with Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag the of the United States, United States of America. To the, to the Republic. For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I will turn things over to the superintendent for the celebration of excellence. Thank you so much. So this is one of my favorite nights of the year because we have so many awesome students to honor. So uh, first we're going to start with the CAVE Awards. So one male and one female student from each school are selected to receive the Connecticut Association of Board of Education Student Leadership Award. These students exhibit leadership skills based on the following criteria. Willingness to take on challenges, capability to make difficult decisions, concern for others, ability to work with others, willingness to commit to a project, diplomacy, ability to understand issues clearly, and ability to honor a commitment. This year's recipients from Bolton Center School are Anishka Ray and Ethan Zakowski. Congratulations to them, and I'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute, so we'll give them a virtual round of applause. That would be great. And from Bolton High School, Brooke Began and Jack Gallagher. So congratulations to them as well. So Anishka, I'm going to start with you. Anishka is the recipient of this year's CAVE Student Achiever Award. She is a dedicated, committed student who uses her abilities to help those around her. She has excelled in her time at Bolton Center School, achieving high honors each trimester. Along with her hard work in the classroom, Anishka has also been a member of the yearbook club and the book club. In her free time, she enjoys baking, journaling, art, including painting and drawing. She is a role model within the classroom. And despite the challenges of remote learning, Anishka has continued to engage with the material and has made her presence known among her peers. She can often be found helping her classmates with their work, being a leader in group settings and communicating frequently with her teachers. She has a drive and an initiative as well as significant responsibility well above her age. Her drive and work ethics stand out and her ability to consistently put forth her best effort are some of the reasons why she is so deserving of this award. Anishka is passionate about school and learning which is evidenced by her willingness to help teachers and her appreciative attitude towards Bolton Center School. Her love of science has created an aspiration to eventually work in the medical field, possibly even as a pulmonary doctor. The eighth grade team knows that great things are in store for this very bright young woman. Anishka's teachers are proud to have her receive this award. Anishka, congratulations to you and your family. Well done. well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Way to go. Our next recipient is Ethan Zakowski. The eighth grade team was very proud to nominate Ethan as their other uh, CAVE Award recipient. He has been widely recognized by both his teachers and his peers as a leader in the class throughout his time in middle school. A high academics honor student, Ethan serves as an example for all students in the grade. He is known for his willingness to work hard in all that he does and cheerfully assists classmates when working with them. He is also recognized for his leadership in extracurricular activities through his involvement on the school soccer team since sixth grade and when he was selected to be team captain during his eighth grade year. He is also active in community soccer as well and enjoys his time with friends and family. Again, the eighth grade team congratulates Ethan on his leadership and his accomplishments at Bolton Center School. Ethan, well-deserved congratulations to you and your family. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, I'm sorry. I have to take a sip of water. My, my breath is, COVID did a number on my lungs, sorry. Our next award recipient from Bolton High School is Brooke Began. Brooke is an intelligent, highly motivated and altruistic student with unlimited potential. She excels academically and has made significant contributions to Bolton High School and the surrounding community. 
Brooke finds success in all that she does, not just because of her intellect, but for her tireless work ethic, meticulous organization, and her endless pursuit of knowledge. Her teachers report that the connection she makes prior to learning and the thought-provoking questions that she asks promotes higher order thinking in the classroom. Brooke prioritizes her time in service to her school and the greater Hartford community. She has served as vice president and president of her class, vice president and president of the Bolton High School Student Council, and also vice president of the National Honor Society. She serves various tutoring programs, assisted in four blood drives, and has initiated a new service program to offer food, clothing, books, and toys for several shelters. She is not only driven for excellence, but she is able to digest constructive feedback, evaluate and reflect on herself, and immediately begin working on improving the outcome of her next task. These qualities and more make Brooke a very deserving recipient of this award. Brooke is planning on majoring in actuarial science in the fall. Congratulations, Brooke, congratulations on this honor to you and your family, well done. Brooke, would you like to say anything? Thank you, I appreciate it. Congratulations, so where are you going to school? Have you decided? Uh, haven't decided quite yet, but I've narrowed it down to Bentley or Bryant University. Good for you. Thank you. Well, let me know when you choose. <laughs> I will. Okay. And our final CAVE Award recipient, but certainly uh, last but not least, Jack Gallagher. Jack excels academically and he has enveloped himself in every aspect of Bolton High School. He is one of the special individuals who has and will continue to make significant contribution in his future field of study, workplace, and surrounding community. Jack has worked tirelessly to balance rigorous course load and is a reliable and consistent participant in many clubs and activities. He has attained high levels of success across all disciplines and in the process has become a fixture on the honor, high honor roll at Bolton High School. In addition to his high grades, his strong service and character has secured his spot on the National Honor Society. Jack is a triathlete playing baseball, soccer, and golf. He's student council rep, president of Future Business Leaders of America, mentor for Unified Sports, and vice president of the Donut Club. Jack's strong leadership qualities are evident in all that he does. His teachers report that he always gives 100% fosters an inclusive and supportive school environment and makes careful and intentional decisions. These qualities and more make Jack a very deserving recipient of this award. Jack is planning on attending UConn in the fall to study finance. Jack, congratulations to you and your family, well-deserved. Would you like to say Thank anything, you. Jack? Thank you, it's a huge honor. Congratulations, congratulations to all our CABE award recipients. Well done. And now on to the CAPS award. CAPS stands for the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents. And this award is presented annually to one male and one female from eighth grade and from the graduating class. The award is presented to those students who show a strong commitment to academics and their school community. This year's recipients from Bolton Center School are Alexandra Miller Davy and Jason Mwangi. And this year's recipients from Bolton High School are Cameron Anderson and George Chukulski. Let's give them a round of applause and I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one of them. I'm going to start with Alexandra. Alexandra Miller Davy is the eighth grade team's female selection for the CAPS Award. She is a high achieving student whose name is consistently found on the honor roll. She is eager to learn how things work and enjoys whenever hands-on activities and the opportunity to build are presented. Under her leadership, the BCS Robotics team won several awards at statewide competitions, in addition to the judges award for exceptional teamwork and communication skills. Alex's engineering skills were put to the test this year when participating in the Connecticut Invention Convention, qualifying for state finals. Perhaps her dreams of attending MIT and becoming a mechanical engineer were seated right here at Bolton Center School, or quite possibly in her backyard. 
not really sure where. Aside from academics, Alex plays the saxophone in the jazz band, participated in soccer, taekwondo, cross country, and somehow finds time to volunteer at the Connecticut Feline Medicine and Surgery Center each week. An avid cyclist, Alex has tackled some amazing challenges in the past year. This winter, she became the youngest woman ever to complete a virtual Everest ascent completing the 29,031 feet of elevation on the bike in her basement. That's amazing. She also dedicates time to cleaning and maintaining trails in the Bolton area at Hop River and Case Mountain so that others can enjoy the pristine views. Alexandra's performance in the classroom, leadership among her peers and dedication to service make her the perfect candidate for the CAPS award this year. Alex, congratulations to you and to your family. Well done and well deserved. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next award recipient, Jason, Jason Mwangi. Jason is a high honor student who can always be counted on to do his best. Recognized for his quiet leadership and his willingness to work with others, his academic perseverance and work ethic serve as a model for his classmates. Jason has played on community basketball and soccer teams, is eagerly anticipating the start of this year's spring soccer leagues, is actively involved in the Bolton Boy Scout Troop 73, performing community service through the troop's many activities, and is still further involved in community service through his church. One thing that makes Jason stand out is his overall attitude and level of maturity. When asked about lessons learned while at BCS, Jason noted, we only have one life to live, true that, <laughs> and his time here is a stepping stone on a longer journey. It is important, he says, to enjoy life, but equally important to work hard, to put yourself in a place where you can be happy in the future. An outstanding student in all areas, but a particular fan of physical education and science classes, Jason has long-term interest in the medical field aspiring to become a doctor or surgeon. For these reasons, we congratulate Jason as the other recipient for Bolton Center School for the CAPS Award. Jason, congratulations to you and your family. You. Would you like to say anything, Jason? Thanks. You're very welcome. And now on to the high school and Cameron Anderson. Karen has thrived both academically and in her extracurricular activities. She is an excellent student who employs analytical and critical thinking skills to solve complex problems. She is not afraid to seek constructive feedback and is always willing to assist her peers. Several years ago, Bolton High School initiated a weekly visitation program after school to a local senior resident care facility, Manchester Manor. Cameron has been a consistent member of the dedicated group that met with residents to play games and aid them in participation at recreational events. She offers compassion and warmth to dozens of seniors who look forward to her Thursday afternoon visits. From the onset, Cameron stepped up and confidently and kindly engaged with the residents and forged relationships that extended outside of the school year. When Cameron noticed a regular missing from the recreation room, she routinely went to their room and encouraged them to join weekly activities. Cameron's empathy, sincerity, and passion for this program have led her to take a leadership role with recruiting fellow students to join in an effort to keep the program going strong. These personal qualities and actions make Karen Anderson a very deserving recipient of this award. Karen, congratulations to you and your family. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. And what's your plan next year, Cameron? Um, I'm going to go to Washington State and go to Washington, uh, Central Washington University. Good for you. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And last but certainly not least, we have George Tchaikovsky. George is a young man who is an excellent student, hardworking athlete, and a helpful, kind individual with a wonderful sense of humor. His transcript depicts success in rigorous honors and AP courses, especially in history, where his passion lies. His teachers report that he is one of the best read students at Bolton High School, truly understanding the nuances of history. 
He is a strong critical thinker and a talented writer, often asking thoughtful questions that enhance his and his classmates' understanding. His talents far surpass the classroom. He is an exceptional athlete and a performer, actively involved in drama club, choir, cross country, and track. George exhibits determination in all that he does. Incredibly self-aware and easy to talk to, he actively seeks constructive feedback, reflects, and immediately begins working on the outcome of his next task. He happily embraces new opportunities and can make any activity fun and enjoyable. He has an open mind and is an outstanding listener. George makes all people feel heard, valued, and appreciated. During these uncertain and trying times, George has served as a role model to his peers and teammates, and he always remains focused and calm, even during times of adversity. It is for these reasons and so many more that we congratulate George this evening. Well done, George. Well, de well deserved. Congratulations to you and your family. Would you like to say anything, George? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, a big congratulations to all of our award winners. Like I said, I think this is one of my most favorite nights of the year. We have amazing uh, young people uh, in our midst, and uh, it's been our delight to uh, watch you grow and to hear about all the wonderful things you've done this year and congratulations on these wonderful honors. You are more than welcome to stay and join us or if you have other things to do, it's okay to hop off as well. Congratulations again. I'll turn it back over to you, Chair Broniel. Thank you, congratulations to all of our fine award recipients. Uh, do we have any comments from the audience tonight? submitted or here now i think i just wanted to say something for brooke you know i work at travelers insurance and i think if she's interested in actuarial science you know she can reach out to us you know we are always looking for actuarial uh, you know leaders in our company so you know always welcome to you know to get uh, you know somebody as talented as you so keep in touch Thank you. I appreciate I'll send it. My, yeah, I'll send our, my emails and I can, you know, I can get, uh, you know, like uh, connect with you for internship or something if you're interested oh. here, you know, at Travelers or something. So that would awesome. be awesome. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Jobs are hard to come by these days. Exactly. That's great. Thank you so much. Are there any other comments from the audience this evening? That might be one of our best comments from the audience ever. Like that was just yeah. awesome. <laughs> from the very many. Uh, do we have any additions to the agenda this evening? We do not. Very good. On to routine business items. Uh, I'd like a motion to approve the minutes of the March 11th, 2021 Board of Education business meeting. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ann. I'll second it, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any uh, edits or comments on these minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting these minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I don't think so. Or abstaining? Uh, on to Board of Education committee reports. Uh, Buildings and Grounds was not able to hold a meeting, but uh, in way of a update, I can say that the tennis courts uh, have been mostly fixed except for white lines and two gouges in the green, which the original contractor will be returning when the weather is a little bit warmer uh, to fix, uh, but the fence has been repaired and things are looking better. Um, there was a clog in the pipe at Bolton High School, which required an early release. Um, that clog has been cleared. Uh, we will are moving forward with uh, bringing air conditioning um, temporary units back for the final month of school, since we still can't have fans blowing on people uh, at this time. Uh, that will be from May 10th to the end of school, June 10th. Um, the new tractor and the truck that were part of this year's CAPA 
have been ordered and have been received. So hopefully everyone is enjoying uh, using those. And finally, the spring cleanup at the schools will be performed during the spring break. Um, on to finance committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, so finance met this morning and at this point we are 64% expended compared to last year when we were 68% expended. So continuing that trend. Um, and Superintendent Heck, could you take us through it really quickly? Absolutely. Um, so um, we are continuing to uh, project full expenditure and regular instruction. Um, student support services continues to be a changing landscape um, month to month, um, but we are working within our budget there. Um, nope, there was a couple more pages on, yeah, on that first one. Thank you. Um, and then um, in terms of uh, the bottom line, uh, we are looking at um, a projection of $381,593 uh, remaining. If we could go to the next page, please. Um, and you will see there um, in that balance um, that we committed already $275,000 of that to the Board of Finance towards next year's budget, which they are aware of. Uh, and requesting a transfer this evening of $50,000 from benefits to instructional technology to purchase replacement Chromebooks to provide equitable access to content for all students in blended and remote learning environments. As the board may recall, uh, we placed our order uh, for replacement Chromebooks last July and we received them in February. I, uh, we have some Chromebooks that right now need to be replaced that were part of uh, next year's replacement. Um, so I think it's prudent that we order them now in the hopes that we even get them before school is out so that our students can be using them, uh, certainly to use uh, in the over the summer as well. Um, the other piece of this is that it's potentially possible that we may not have to use this full amount for the purchase of the Chromebooks if we're able to receive them this year. We are in the process of applying for our ESSER II um, monies. We are going to be standing up a summer program um, for students um, in grades, incoming grades one through eight at center school um, who need um, some assistance based on, you know, the results of the pandemic and some, um, you know, learning loss uh, to focus on that. We're, we're putting in a budget number, but we don't have exact data yet because we're still working with students and still working on that data. So it's possible. And we also are going to be standing up some programs at the high school as well for credit recovery and for an incoming uh, sort of like ninth grade, I guess we'll call it boot camp, Mr. Maselli, or something like that. Okay. Um, uh, to help our students uh, who are entering ninth grade as well. So we are also gonna be budgeting some money for Chromebooks out of that grant, but not the full amount. It may be in the end that we don't need as many teachers as we budget for, and there will be additional ESSER two monies to go towards more Chromebooks. But I just don't know yet. Uh, the ESSER two is due on April 19th, and I don't expect that we're going to see um, a review or the money until May. So you know we're getting later and later in the process. So hence my request for this transfer. And obviously if we don't use it or we don't receive the goods in time, the money will be returned to the town. And then the other piece is um, if we could just go over um, transfers, Joe, please, if you could click on that one for me. That one there? Yeah, the, yes, please. Yep, okay. Yep, so we had um, to pay for an interpreter for a PPT meeting. We needed some additional uh, art instructional supplies, uh, additional cost for registration fee for our middle school students for invention convention. Um, we had some additional English language arts hand, teacher handbooks. Uh, we had additional shipping for the gopher disc golf that we talked about last month. Um, again, 
part of the uh, translator services there, travel expenses. Um, guidance is going to be using uh, Sign Up Genius um, for scheduling meetings with parents and students for post-secondary planning. And uh, our Seesaw subscription was due to end April 1st, and we needed to extend it to get it to uh, end of fiscal year date so that we can renew it for July 1. And um, we had two portable benches um, that were purchased. And um, the reason for the lateness of this, even though they were purchased back in October, we wanted it to be sure exactly what was expended out of that account before we needed to make any transfers. So we knew exactly how much we needed to transfer because we knew we might have some savings depending upon how things went. And we needed a replacement check printer. Are there any questions for me about the technology piece? Okay, so we'll need to do two motions. One to um, accept the transfers and the other, um, with regards to the additional $50,000 transfer that I'm requesting in, in advance. I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, the transfers. Thank you, Chris. Second. Thank you, Ann. Is there any comments or discussion on the transfers from this month? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, anyone opposed or abstaining? We're shorthanded tonight, so I think I heard everyone actually this time. Uh, now we're looking for a motion to approve the $50,000 transfer from uh, salaries and benefits to technology for the Chromebook purchase. Uh, Rhea will make a motion for the transfer of $50,000 for the Chromebook purchase. Thank you. I can second that. Thank you, Chris. Is there any questions or comments on the Chromebook transfer? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone who is opposed or abstaining? think so. Uh, thank you. Uh, now on to personnel. Personnel committee did have a meeting to discuss some Andrew, you're on mute again. Sorry. <laughs> uh, personnel committee did meet uh, to discuss the uh, insurance changes, which we will hear about during both the regular meeting and an executive session this evening, uh, which now I believe brings us to the student representative reports. I saw some student representatives on still, right? Who goes first? Em, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. The junior class had their NGSS science test yesterday, and everything went very smoothly. And they had their SAT coming up next Tuesday. The track team will have their first meet against Summers in East Windsor at Summers on April 14th. The tennis team will have their first match against Canton on April 12th. And the softball team has their first game at home on April 14th against Granby. Thank you very much. And then seniors are presenting their capstone, which is like their senior project on April 22nd. So everyone's finalizing their presentations. April break is coming up and it's the week of the 17th to the 25th. And AP exams are just around the corner in May. So many upperclassmen are starting to study for them. The baseball team's first game is on the 14th and the golf team's first match is this upcoming Monday. And the school is doing a great job following social distancing rules and COVID protocols with everyone back in school. And it's pretty nice to be back in school as well. Thank you, Jack and Emily. You guys feel free to stay on, but you don't have to. 
Uh, okay, on to community meeting reports. So we have community meetings this month. Um, yes, PTA um, had a meeting and um, the budget was presented by Superintendent Hecht uh, and the PTA voted to support that budget. I attended two meetings this past month, uh, Bolton Scholarship Fund and CREC. Um, nothing to report really from, from either meeting, both were quite brief. Thank you, is there anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, now I'll turn things over to the superintendent of schools for the superintendent of schools report. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Maselli, if we could um, put our screen back up there, that'd be great. Okay, so this past Wednesday, we had our second um, vaccine clinic for all uh, Bolton Public School staff. Um, today was a remote learning day to account for potential reactions to the second dose by our staff. Uh, I'm glad that we took this proactive approach because we had a number of staff members um, and about 10 minutes before the start of this meeting, uh, Ms. Goldsnyder, Mr. Maselli, and Mr. Girard and I had a meeting uh, because we have had uh, a number of staff members indicate um, that they are really not well and um, unsure that they're not looking like they're going to be able to come to work tomorrow. So um, at the end of this meeting, I will be announcing that tomorrow will be a remote learning day. Um, and I'm doing this in an effort to just help parents plan tonight. I was trying so hard to get it out before the start of this meeting, but I just couldn't get it all together. So um, just making everybody aware of that. We're just doing our very best here. And to be honest, I, I am thrilled that our staff is vaccinated. I'm sorry that so many of them are, are having uh, such difficulty. I would like to thank very much so publicly, Mrs. Goldsnyder for the yeoman's effort that she has done uh, to make this, uh, both our vaccine clinics happen. It was more work than I think anyone can possibly imagine uh, to make that happen uh, in collaboration with the Eastern Highlands Health District. And she did an amazing job and is to be commended because I think, you know, standing up vaccine clinics is helping to save people's lives. And that is exactly what I told her last night. Uh, and I would also like to thank um, Mr. Maselli and Mr. Giard for their efforts as well uh, in supporting her to get that done. So thank you very much. Um, as you are aware, um, I did announce that Bolton High School is going to be remote the three days, uh, Bolton Public Schools, excuse me, will be remote the three days following April break. Uh, this is being done um, because we have a number of families who have indicated they are traveling over the break. We have numerous staff members also traveling over break. So in an effort to try to keep everybody safe, um, this gives people an opportunity to test, even those who are vaccinated. I am asking our staff, those who are vaccinated to please get a test upon their return home because just because you're vaccinated doesn't necessarily mean that you can't still be sharing um, COVID. So um, I recognize this is not ideal and is difficult for families, but first and foremost, we have to keep every, do our very best to keep everybody safe. We will be returning to five days a week of in-person learning on Monday, May 10th, should all things go well, and I'm hopeful that they will. Um, and families who have opted for full-time distance learning will be allowed to continue to learn from home. I'm now gonna ask Director Goldsnyder to just kind of give you a little bit of an update on contact tracing and kind of how that works and what that looks like. Okay. Hold on a second, I just lost my page, so let me just open it up again. Uh, first, I would like to thank Superintendent Heck for her very kind words about the clinic. I do have to say that I would not have been able to do it without, um, she really started the uh, the work before she was 
taken ill and also um, Mr. Maselli worked hand in hand with me on the project the entire time. So um, I just wanna say thank you for all of the support that I got um, the whole time because it was a lot of work, but staff were thrilled and we couldn't be happier that they are all vaccinated. So thank you to everybody who did assist with that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about contact tracing because we talk a lot about making decisions to go remote and this week, as you've heard, we've been remote at the high school for a couple of days because of um, positive cases and contact tracing. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about it so everybody knows kind of what goes into contact tracing and why sometimes it takes a little bit more time than we would all like it to take. So contact tracing is the process where we determine who are the close contacts to a positive case. We have to then notify the contacts of the exposure, provide next steps such as the length of quarantine, return to school or work date. We answer any questions or concerns that arise during our conversations. We discuss what it means to monitor symptoms and what people should be looking for. We refer or provide information about COVID testing and we figure out if there are additional needs during the quarantine period. When we've had either staff members out or families, we check to see, is there somebody who can go out and go grocery shopping for you? Because if a whole family is quarantined then there's nobody to get groceries or nobody to run to CVS to get things. So we always kind of check in to make sure that those needs are taken care of as well. Maybe not seen as a real educational need, but we feel it's a need that, that we need to, to help address. Um, so contact tracing starts as soon as we receive information about a positive case and it's either somebody calls us, a parent calls us, a staff member lets us know, or Eastern Highland Health District contacts us to let us know that there's been a positive case in our community. Um, and then the nurses and I start to talk about that and we figure out the dates that the person was infectious and figure out what their isolation period needs to be, the 10 day period. And it's all you know, figured out, there's, there's timelines for everything. And then we start to check the attendance to see what days that student or the staff member was in school to see if they were in school on their infectious period. Um, and then at that point, I begin working with um, Mr. Giardo or Mr. Maselli, depending on where the, the, the student or staff person is. Um, and there's a lot that's involved. And we work, and when I say we work 24 seven together, I mean, we really do some, these cases can take, we started on Easter Sunday afternoon and worked for a couple of days. So um, it's really, it, it takes a lot of um, collaboration. So we start to pull student schedules. We look at seating charts. We've developed every teacher has a seating chart that is updated on a regular basis. The principals make sure that those are updated when we get new kids in, when kids leave, so that we can pull them at, at, at any moment. And they're all in Google or accessible to us 24 seven. So we can look at them from home if we have to start contact tracing at home to see who was sitting next to the, the positive um, person and determine the close contacts like that. So we look at the, the um, seating charts in the classroom. We look at um, bus seating charts and sometimes the bus seating charts, we're not sure if they're accurate. So we get bus videos and we look at bus videos. We also look at um, cafeteria seating charts. We've learned from every time we do a contact tracing, something that needs to be improved upon. So we have seating charts in the cafeteria now, which we look at. And again, if we're not sure about those, then um, especially in Mr. GR school, he'll go on and look at the videos uh, to see, you know, was that child really sitting there or, or not? So we can really make sure. Um, and we also have to, we have sign up, sign out sheets on all of the classroom and office doors now. So people who sign in and sign out every day. So we pull those charts and look at those to cross reference of where their reading specialists in that classroom where that positive case was. Was there a paraprofessional? Was an administrator in there? So we check all of those and then do another cross check to see if they're considered a close contact. Um, we, if the student is an athlete, we then have to talk to the coaches to determine who the close contacts were and which students were in that particular student's cohort on the athletic team. So that's another set of um, data that we're looking at. We also interview all of the students, uh, all of the teachers, students, and support staff. So if they're seen by a reading consultant, if they have eight teachers, we interview all eight teachers. How close were you? And we can't identify the students, so it's all you know, kind of in cryptic language. Did you have any close contact with students? And um, so we have to we do that with all teachers to make sure that they're comfortable, either being identified as a close contact or not being considered a close contact. We want them to to be comfortable with that decision. Um, so then by that time we have a list of close contacts. Sometimes it's just a few. Sometimes it's upwards of 
25 to 30 people. So then the phone calls start and the nurses begin call, making phone calls to parents. And I usually call the staff members and have the conversations with them so I can answer the questions. During this entire process, um, I am also in contact with the health district. If we have questions, if we're not sure about the dates that we should be looking at, because some of the cases are a little tricky. Sometimes somebody starts as a close contact and then moves to become a positive case. So we just, we check all of those with the health district. Um, this process can take five or more hours to complete for just one positive case. And the reason why it takes so much is really, I think we've, we've improved on our process since the beginning. And we have so many data points that we look at. So instead of just quarantining an entire class or an entire grade level, which would be the easiest thing to do, let's face it, we can easily do that, but we don't do that because we, we don't wanna have kids out of school if they don't have to be. So we really are checking all the information, all the data points that we have to make informed decisions. Um, but we also, we're, we're overly cautious sometimes and we'll include children, you know, that are kind of right on that cusp of that 15 minutes, maybe. So um, we are very cautious, but we, we use all the data we have. Uh, again, I could not do this process without the, the two school nurses, Mrs. McCarthy and Mrs. Walsh have been phenomenal um, working nights and weekends with us on these. And um, Mr. Giard and Mr. Maselli and I, we just were working on these um, on a pretty regular basis. So I just wanted to kind of give an explanation because people hear about contact tracing, but I think until you're doing it, until I know more about COVID and contact tracing now than I ever thought I would or ever wanted to know. Um, but I, I, we've really improved upon our practice, which I think is why we've been able to keep our numbers um, so low. I'm not tooting my horn, but I'm tooting our horns because as one of our students said earlier, we are really, really good and vigilant about following our protocols and our practices that we have put in place because everybody has bought into it. So it has made my job doing this much easier. I won't say it's fun, um, but it's um, it's something that you know we collaborate on. And um, I just wanted to share a little bit of that. If anybody has any questions, I certainly am open to questions. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Beth. Any questions for Beth? Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to, you know, that was really eye opening and uh, thank you so much for putting that together and for telling us everything that goes into it. Um, you know, we've heard about contact tracing this whole time and you can kind of imagine what it might entail, but to hear the nitty gritty details, it's really important that everybody understands what you guys are all doing and so far above what is in anybody's job description. Um, it's just amazing and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have amazing staff for sure. Uh, BC, uh, Mr. Maselli, you're perfect, perfect timing. Uh, BCS update, so good evening everybody. Uh, BCS experienced a successful return of all six through eight students on March 12, uh, March 15th. The staff, students, and families have been amazing with communication, planning, and following all the safety procedures uh, during the most recent return. The energy in the building now that we're all back uh, K-8 brings some sense of normalcy. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it's some sense of normalcy, which has been really nice. We're well underway with planning the summer program as Superintendent Heck mentioned earlier. Uh, for this coming summer that will address the unfinished learning of our students. Uh, there's going to be a group of students that are going to be invited to come into the building to learn during the month of July. And we'll also have enriching activities similar to last summer uh, that will be available to all students. The details of the summer program who will be invited into the building is not finalized because we're looking at funding, staffing, uh, but once all that is solidified, the information will be shared with families. Um, end of the year events. So we continue to plan and meet for the end of year activities, uh, which so many students and families look forward to. And I mentioned this at the PTA meeting the other night. Uh, we have multiple layers to our plan. So it's not just planning one promotion, it's kind of planning like three of them. Um, because there's multiple layers depending on the guidance from the health department when that time of the year comes, because we're really trying to make um, these events be much more of an experience than last year is the best way to put it. Uh, so more than just having a video, but maybe we can have the students in person or some parents, but it, a lot of it depends on the, the guidance from the health department. Uh, once details are ironed out for the end of the year activities, uh, we're going to share all that information with uh, about the events with families. 
And the last piece of the update is the remote learner update. Uh, we're getting more and more in person. We're down to 11% from 19% um, of students that are remote at this point. So that's 55 total students. And you can see below the breakdown by grade level of how many students are still fully remote. Um, since the superintendent Hecht announced that we're going to be back all in on May uh, 10th, a uh, few families have reached out and asked, could they continue doing remote learning for the rest of the year? And we we told them that superintendent Hecht shared that they could decide to do that. So. More and more, though, are coming to being in the building. That number's getting lower. Thank you. Any um, questions? For oops, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jared. Uh, so here are the, the numbers for uh, Bolton High School. <clears throat> uh, down to about 15%. Um, some in, some out. So basically an overall trend. Of, of more folks coming back in. Um, the guidance team is doing just a, a great job. I wanted to publicly thank them because as students uh, either go out temporary, excuse me, temporarily based on the kinds of things that Ms. Goldsender just spoke about, or a family decides to send their student back in that they were remote or, or perhaps pull them out remote, that's, a, that's an ongoing shift. And the guidance team has done a great job, built a great system uh, to keep all the teachers notified so they know when to you know, welcome students uh, remotely. Um, I also want to commend the Bolton High School teachers for doing a remarkable job maintaining the balance between the students that are in the building and those are uh, that might be remote. They've met the challenge all year, but it's particularly difficult now because things are changing uh, almost daily. I'm frozen. I'm frozen? You Am keep freezing. Am I okay? No? Yes. Okay. Um, as we enter April, it is time to start thinking about scheduling. Ms. Johnson, along with the guidance team, has been working hard, uh, and the process will include, of course, our eighth grade Bolton Center students as well. And uh, we have begun plans to welcome the class of 2025 um, to Bolton High School in the fall. And uh, as for the class of 2021, uh, we certainly have started giving thought to end of year activities, including proms, awards, and of course, graduation. Working with the senior class advisors and Dean Christine, um, we have reserved venues, we've got lots of options open, and we are, as Mr. Giard said, currently awaiting guidance from the Department of Public Health before we can make decisions. Uh, in truth, with the ever-changing landscape of the pandemic, I don't know, um, I, I don't think we'll have finalized plans anytime soon, but we're being diligent about making sure options are open and we will do a great job communicating when the time comes. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Maselli? All right, hearing none, that concludes my report this evening. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, now we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, we have a second read, so I'll be looking for a motion to approve the purchase of the AP Music Theory Textbook, the Musician's Guide to Theory and Analysis, fourth AP edition. So moved. Second. Thank you, Chris and Ann. Is there anyone who would like to comment or ask questions about this textbook? Hearing none, all those in favor of the purchase say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining. Thank you very much. Uh, health insurance update. I'm pleased to share with you that um, all of our bargaining units um, have indicated that they uh, are in favor of moving to the state partnership plan, which we will, uh, for health insurance for next year, uh, we will be discussing this in executive se session later on this evening. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our bargaining units for their willingness uh, to work together uh, with me um, on our health insurance predic predicament for sure. Thank you. 2021-2022 uh, budget update. So the Board of Finance has begun their deliberations on the budget. Um, there are uh, Board of Finance meetings uh, on the budget next week on Tuesday and on Thursday. And uh, there is one scheduled, I think it's the 20th um, over April break. And there will be a public hearing on Tuesday, April 27th. 
Thank you very much. Uh, now on to new business, which we have resignations. Uh, we do. We uh, cafeteria worker uh, Penelope Nelson and BCS paraprofessional uh, Zippy Kerr have resigned. Uh, and I would like to thank them for their service. Thank you. Do we have any future business? We do not at this time. Uh, all right. So now we'll be looking for a motion to discuss a uh, review of confidential documents relating to collective bargaining and also to invite the superintendent. I'll make that motion. It will second. Thank you, Anne and Maria. Uh, thank you all for coming this evening. And are we just staying on, I assume? Yeah, we're just going to stay on. Mr. Maselli. Recording stopped. And then exit everybody out. That'd be great. Yep, very good. I'll just wait for folks to leave. Good night. Bye. Thank you, Daryl. Good night. Good night, Beth.